Today on Painting Our Monsters, we're going to be painting the foreground for our Energetic Orb Giant, or EOG. This foreground, we're going to be painting some of the things we all see around us all the time, some chain link fence and some litter. Uh, I'm going to be focusing on painting the litter in my neighborhood, but I encourage you to paint whatever kind of trash and garbage people are throwing on the streets where you live. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is separate our middle ground from our foreground by using a chain link fence. You can see I got some larger sort of bushes back there. Uh, underneath at the base of this tree there's a big sort of maybe I don't know ficus kind of bush sort of thing and then there's a little closer stuff uh, darker green stuff down by the water so uh, to, to really just make sure that it's clear that this is grass and in, in the very foreground and that stuff's further back we're using a chain link fence here because it's a fun little fun little technique that I think everybody should try I got chain link fences just about everywhere there's you know we see chain link fences at schools we see them in uh, neighborhoods, we see them at playgrounds, at sporting places, so we all know exactly what they look like. They got these uh, vertical metal posts made of steel a lot of times, and then there's this uh, chain link running in between them. So the first thing we want to do is just come in and put your poles, just using a mix of uh, black and white to get a gray. You can put in some silver if you're feeling fancy, and just kind of lay that in and then come back across with a lighter white mixed with gray to get, give it kind of a gleaming on one side, and uh, just lay it in. And that gives us a little bit of three-dimensionality. I'm not going for anything perfect here. You know, It's all just about having fun and moving right along while we paint these things. So that's what we're trying to do. Uh, for that same effect, to get the top of the fence, uh, we're just scratching in uh, that same color, just kind of giving us some indication. You can leave this fence. This fence is, is made sometimes with a pole across the top or without a pole, so you know you can decide uh, what, the, what the budget was when they built this thing. I decided to have mine with a pole because we do want to keep people out back here. Um, and then you just get the tiniest little bit of paint and you just come along to show the, the faintest little indication of these little wires. You really don't want to put too much paint here. This is definitely an, an opportunity for you to just overdo it. So be careful and start on one side, not in the very center, just to kind of give it a give it an idea. And it doesn't look right until you cross it back and forth. There's something special about crossing it that just uh, just makes it look like a fence that we've all seen. I don't think they're the most attractive fences in the world, but uh, they sure are fun to paint, and they're so recognizable. And as long as we have them in the world, I think we should we should put them in our paintings. And uh, on that same token, that's why I like to paint litter. Uh, where I'm from, here in Texas, people throw their drinks on the street on a pretty regular basis. I'd say uh, I try to get out and pick up garbage uh, once a week or every other week. And one thing I find a lot of is cans, so I'm I'm putting down here with a can. Um, I like to put in the color first, whatever it is, red or blue, and then go back in with the silver to kind of line it in the end. Another thing I see a lot of is uh, just paper, you know, just ads thing just down the street. I like to do paper just with a little squiggle of white and then a little bit of a little bit of black on here to show like, oh, that's where it was written on. You know, it's kind of a simple effect, but I think it's a lot of fun to do that. Now, of course, another thing I, I think we see in cities a bunch is we see cigarette butts all over the place. So for that, we just need a little bit of, uh, of the color of the filter. And then you need some white just in a simple little line. And you got yourself a little cigarette over there just on the ground. Um, and I'm putting in, I'm working first, just putting in some shapes here of the simple, of just the trash. But then we're going to come back and put in some plants to kind of make it all come together. Because otherwise it's just going to look like we have this trash sitting out in front and that's not going to quite work. So back here I'm putting, uh, maybe this is a, you know, a, a half rusted can. Maybe this one, the label totally faded off, you know, so, or it's one of them, one of the micro brews that don't, they don't print it right on the can. They wrap it in like a plastic. And so maybe that's faded and come off. And so that's what we're looking at back there. And as you see, you pay attention to the land. I had this little bit of grass in here, just green off a brush. And now I'm just coming in and, and putting a few little tufts of something taller. Maybe something that's that's uh, sending out its seed heads this time of year. Maybe the landscapers mixed it, missed it. I don't know. But it's just a couple of these guys in here to kind of send our fence back and to, to work in the layers we have. I had a couple of different layers. And so now when I pop it in all of a sudden wait a minute there's a layer in front that's weeds it's popping up right you start to see these little hillocks these little if you were out here walking you'd be looking for where to stand and look at this guy without snagging your feet and you know you'd want to be careful not to trip on a branch now so let's work a little stick in there because of course these you never 
a lot of times people do a good job of picking up the field, the you know, places where people play, playgrounds and, and meadows and stuff. It's always these kind of more abandoned spots that have all the trash. So uh, put a branch in there because there's going to be some dead branches. You know, branches are, are something you're going to have to learn how to paint even if you do pick up all the trash in your neighborhood, which I do recommend, by the way. Uh, nothing feels better than going out and realizing a painting you just did has now become fiction. Uh, too too often these you know this is the landscape that I see which is why I like to put them in here I like to put all these little guys in here you know when you see that gleaming can that red can of coca-cola oh my goodness in the landscape look at that and then it matches the color of the beast right so it you can choose your garbage based on to match the painting or to match where you were or what you saw but I do think it adds a little interest and a little bit of realism to the world because uh, we're you know we're everywhere I go there's garbage all the time even if people are good about it, it spills out of the backs of trucks when we see it here and there blowing in the wind. So, you know, putting in all this stuff adds a level of realism and it tells your viewer that this isn't a fantasy world, it's a world like ours. And I think, you know, that's a fun thing to think about. Sometimes if we go too crazy with this kind of fantasy painting stuff, you put in some monsters and people think you aren't showing the world for what it is. And I think all painting shows something, shows the world what you're thinking or shows people what they want to see or need to see. And uh, I think uh, putting in a little bit of garbage is a is a fun little way to do that. Little, you know, a little tongue in cheek. And you get to put work in these little colors, work on these all these little shapes and textures. So if you're, uh, you know, still working out your your technique or just having a good time when you paint, working on all these little detailed things is a fun way to do it. I'm just on my palette. I just have these couple of colors, some gray. Uh, these have an olive green, a yellow, and a, and a vivid green, and just mixing those together and putting in different structures here and there, trying to go on top of the spots I've already been to to add some more highlights, you know, so you kind of give these little spots depths and show, okay, this over here, there was that grass we put in earlier, well, let's give it some highlights now, right? If you ever go too much, it's so much, it's so satisfying to scrape through this paint with one of these things and watch your big clumsy strokes of the brush just become gentle little things. I always keep a knife handy with me uh, to scratch things in. Now this is a ton of fun. As dainty as we can be, a little bit of smoke. And all of a sudden, our painting's in the present. That's a moment now, because that thing there is it's burning. Someone just ran off. And it's time for me to run off too, so I'm going to go ahead and sign this thing. Do my best to sign it. Uh, my initials, here we go. How about that? Thank you so much for joining us on Painting Our Monsters today. I had a great time painting all those little bits of garbage and trash. Uh, I know some folk think it's silly to paint such things, but I think we'll look back on those bits of our paintings and see the truth of the world around us. Uh, hopefully your neighborhood doesn't have any trash. And remember, our world is what we make it.